Hello again. I haven't made a video in a really long time and I'm really looking forward to making more and start churning out content. And this first video is on the subject of psychological violence. Now most people when they think of violence, they think of physical violence or harm to the body. But psychological violence is trauma inflicted upon our psyches or psychological trauma. Now a good example of this would be uh, this printout for, from JW.org. If you notice, it is a comic um, of uh, this, a very famous story in the Bible called uh, Lot and his family. Or, and uh, what it's about is it's about this woman who is executed by God um, for not obeying the instructions. And if you notice, she's crying right here. And she goes through this very painful experience. You know, it starts out on her, on her feet and starts enveloping her body and she looks like she's in a lot of pain and terror um, and then she dies. And then there's her corpse right there. And if you notice, this is a children's thing and so what it says right here has these little questions. And the last question right here is, uh, why should you listen to your parents when they tell you not to do something? So this is, a, this is the lesson that they're trying to give is that you need to listen to your parents or else you could end up like Lot's wife, um, who went through an extremely painful, agonizing, uh, demeaning, and regretful death. And so ultimately, um, obeying your parents means staying in the religion, because that's what your parents are going to tell you. They're going to say, you, I, we want you to stay in the religion, we want you to be a Jehovah's Witness. And so while you're under their roof, you have to be a Jehovah's Witness. And they're doing it for your protection. And so this is a great example of psychological violence. And so what's happening is they are telling the, ch the child to kind of experience this by, by way of a uh, comic. They're, they're kind of helping them experience it a little bit so that they can get an idea of what would happen to them if they were to ever um, not be a Jehovah's Witness or not follow God's command, which is to be a Jehovah's Witness. Um, and to do all the stuff that, that Jehovah's Witnesses do. And so that psychological violence inflicted upon the kid because it's traumatizing. And um, Jehovah's Witnesses are a perfect example of psychological violence, but it's not unique to them. There are lots and lots of different groups out there that employ psychological violence. And what, what it ends up doing is it ends up creating... Um, what's called a captive organization. And I got that term from um, a man named Angus Stewart, who's a lawyer in Australia. And I'll get to him in a little bit. But he used this term, captive organization. And I think psychological violence is a perfect way to explain that. Now let me give you an example. So there is physical containment. So physically detaining someone. Okay, you see this a lot in the more fringe cults where you have like a great leader in a complex and he coaxes people into the complex and then he physically detains them. He literally uses violence or threat of violence to keep people within this complex. And typically what's ha what happens with those um, is they eventually um, cannot be sustained and the law enforcement usually comes and some horrible thing happens or something like that. But so the difference is these organizations that employ physical violence or physical detainment to keep their membership in, they can't get that big. They're all, they all have to be small time. But if you employ psychological violence and you create psychological walls instead of physical walls, you, your capacity for growth is immense. Like look at the Jehovah's Witnesses, for example. They have like 8 million members. And so that's proof that the use of psychological detainment is extremely effective in creating large groups of people and controlling them. And so to me, that's why they use these methods is because they want to keep retain their membership. And that's why Angus Stewart called it a captive organization. Because if you ever leave or if you ever think about leaving or think about stop believing or believing something differently, this is going to come up, ideally. This, or something like it, will come up in your brain, and you will be like, nope, not leaving. 
because you're afraid of the possible outcome, even though there's no actual evidence here. There's, there's no evidence that this is going to be your fate if you leave the Jehovah's Witness organization. But there's power in using, the, um, using imagery, graphic imagery, to imprint those phobias into the, psych the, the psyche, which in turn creates um, fear that is used as a wall to contain people within your religion. Okay, so what I'm trying to say with this video is there is such a thing as psychological containment of large groups of people. And a lot of it has to do with child indoctrination, because that's what this is. This is a child's document. This is made for children, okay, to, once again, create fear, manufacture fear, create fear where there was no before, and use that fear to lead them in, inside the organization, to keep them inside of the organization. Um, and the reason why I'm, I make such a big deal out of this is because, uh, what, what time is it right now? It's almost one o'clock. So at three o'clock, I will be at a psychologist's office because I have to go to a highly trained psychotherapist to deal with the after effects that come from the psychological trauma inflicted um, when, you, when you're raised as a Jehovah's Witness. Because when you're raised as a Jehovah's Witness, the end is imminent, and they, they preach about this mass slaughter. And so you're, you're, at, you're this kid, you're at school, and uh, you, all, all, the, all the people at school, you, you know that, that they're probably not gonna make it. You know, so when the Mar Armageddon comes, most of these people are gonna be corpses, and that you, it's your responsibility to dig mass graves and clean up the dead. Living that type of life, as a child is psychologically tormenting, okay? Psychological damage takes place by continuously living in this state of fear, okay? And that fear is perpetuated by way of all the different stuff that comes out of the watchtower, okay? There's stuff for kids, there's stuff for adults, and it's all like fine-tuned to help you understand either what you can, what you're gonna lose if you don't, if you don't be a Jehovah's Witness, and what's gonna happen to you, the bad things that are gonna happen to you if you're not a Jehovah's Witness. Okay, so when you go through that for long periods of time, what can result is psychological trauma. And my my point is, is that I, I don't think psychological trauma is really taken as seriously as it should be in our culture. We all focus on those small fringe cults, and we say that, that that's the that's the bottom of the barrel there, like that. And so then someone like the Jehovah's Witnesses come along and say, yeah, yeah, we're not we're not doing physical violence, so we're okay. But that doesn't change change the um, idea that they are captive, because when Angus Stewart, the the lawyer in Australia who was interviewing a governing body member in a court session in the context of a court, which was amazing, by the way. If you have any time, go look up Jeffrey Jackson, Australian Royal Commission on YouTube. Oh, it's amazing. But this guy, Angus Stewart, he got to ask him questions. He got to ask him questions like, isn't, it, isn't your organization a captive organization? Don't you use shunning and, and psychological control to um, keep people in your religion? And the governing board member was basically, he basically laughed at him. He said, yeah, right, you, 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 all right, you're entitled to your opinion. You know, and so he just brushes it off. The idea that they use psychological violence in order to establish a containment within the religion is silly to him. And so they don't take it seriously at all. And I think a lot of people in our society don't take this seriously. And that's, that's why I'm making this video, is to help you understand that psychological violence can have horrible effects, sometimes worse. Because if they break your arm, your arm can be set. And you can get a cast around it and it'll heal. Psychological violence is an incredibly difficult task to tackle and to try to help, help yourself. 
Because if I don't if I don't go to my psychotherapist and I don't have that regular session with an objective trained professional, I can lose myself. I can lose grasp with reality because of all the trauma that is going on up here and how that affects my perceptions and how I see everything can be completely off, completely off. And I could not understand things or misunderstand things or have incredible feelings about certain things that are not appropriate. And so I have to go to a trained psychotherapist who's objective who can, who can look at my life and see the things that I can't and then inform me and help me. Okay, so I need that. That's expensive. You know, that's something that is, is, is difficult to attain. But yet, yet here I am. And we have people all around the world saying, well, you know, you know, people, Jehovah's Witnesses are free to do whatever they want. You know, and, 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 and then the, the spokesmen come out. And they say, Jehovah's Witnesses are free, and they're not, uh, Tony Morris said, they're not chained. They're not chained to the, uh, the, the, the chairs. But it's like, they are actually. The chains are just invisible. You know, but they're still chains, and they still inhibit, and they still keep people from making those first steps outside of the organization, because what they'll experience is pain. You can't leave the organization and not experience pain. Because that's the way it's set up. There are psychological walls that are set up, which, like what I was saying, is a method. It's an approach to religion that is, makes a bigger group. It, makes, it gives you more power. It gives you more control and more influence, more money, because you're employing something that's more subtle. I mean, if you just build a complex and start putting people in there like a prison, you're not going to go very far. But if you create a psychological prison and you fine tune it and you make sure that all the legalities in it and you have this massive army of lawyers that can, that can make sure all this stuff is legal, technically legal, then you can just grow and expand and become this mega empire and have all this power. You know, and it's all founded on the idea that psychological violence is um, not that big of a deal. So it's just food for thought, something that I think is important to get out there. Um, and uh, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe and share it uh, with your friends. I would really appreciate it. Thank you.